So for uh, Leah and my project, this is Stephen talking. We focused on Williamson and Williamson's Grange Triple Double for the, the underlying case study. And uh, we took inspiration from their, their, their discourses, their, um, their methods and their purposes to apply our own understanding of those and our own hopes and our own interests in line with uh, nearby Detroit neighborhoods for our, uh, our research um, proposal. So beginning with discourses, um, we'd like to give a summary of the case study. Um, so what, what are some of the larger conversations revolving Williamson and Williamson's Grange Triple Double? Um, densifying urban areas, aging families and neighborhoods, and rising cost of living all rot rotate around their clients' needs where they designed a multi-generational home to meet what they needed to live in a dens densified uh, urban area. The, um, the amenities of cities, rising pollution, and interconnection define our technological age. City centers continue to densify and the space has stayed the same. Housing has and will continue to need to change as architects and developers seek to meet their clients' needs and stay relevant in today's society. Grange Triple Double was faced with a dense Toronto Chinatown. Williamson and Williamson rose to the task by redefining a hybridized home. Furthermore, another discourse that they focused on was aging families. Um, in our increasingly busy society, both parents working and high cost of elderly care or child care run rampant. With the need to care for aging grandparents as well as caring for young children with a busy work schedule, the owners of the Grange Triple Double approached Williamson and Williamson asking for a connected yet separate living arrangement. Another discourse they engaged was cost. As cities grow and as the economy shifts, many locales experience rising cost of living. Toronto's growing Chinatown poses a problem for families who wish to maintain their home in the area or move in. However, it also boasts a nearby university and walkability, all the while with its cultural enrichment. So how do families afford situations like this with higher cost of living? Uh, to meet the client's predicament, the firm proposed multiple solutions, which we'll go into with our methods. Furthermore, um, we would like to kind of define what Lee and I uh, chose as our discourses. Um, we looked at what they, they engaged and we slightly modified them for our own interests. We focused on urban density, aging, dis, um, aging families, and the cost of living in the property upkeep. These conversations exist heavily in surrounding Detroit neighborhoods, which provide a driver and slight modification from Williamson and Williamson for discourses, um, yeah, for discourses which inspired us to pursue them further. This led us to ask questions such as how to improve housing affordability for Detroit families, enable lower costs for elderly and child care, and the ability to provide green space opportunities and better property upkeep with Detroit neighborhoods. For the next portion, we looked at different methods to do research to back up the information that we're trying to find out about multi-generational housing, both in the case study and in Detroit neighborhoods. How is research completed as it relates to architecture and design? For the Grange Triple Double project by Williamson and Williamson, a historic interpretive approach was used to gain information about multi-generational viability for the design within Toronto, Canada. First, the zoning information on the site was gathered. Research into all the housing types previously allowed is also completed simultaneously. 12 distinct types were found to already be approved by the city. With this information in mind, a combination of types was allowed, was designed to allow for multi-generational use. We would hope to discover what limitations exist within the city zoning already to lay ourselves a framework for what could be possible within the city of Detroit moving forward with our proposal. In order to learn about multi-generational housing within Detroit, Stephen and I were proposing to take a similar research method as Williamson and Williamson through historic interpretive research into housing types already allowed within Detroit neighborhoods, our thesis could be reapproached with unique designs. The history of Detroit's housing can also be looked at in a historic interpretive way to understand past challenges within the city that have gotten it to the state that it's in today. Knowing the context of a project allows the designer to make informed decisions throughout the project. So our next uh, narrative here was for the purpose that both Williamson and Williamson and now Leah and I would choose 
to move forward with. So we'd like to look at what drives a piece of architecture or design. Is it simply a dollar amount, pride, or ambition, or do a greater purpose ultimately drive good architecture? In the case of Grange Triple Double, the client's needs and Williamson and Williamson's ambitions uh, redefined housing to redefine housing drove its purpose. So we'd like to look uh, first at um, the firm hoping to meet the client's needs for multi-generational arrangements to provide a new typology for housing and connected families. This is clearly something that the firm was passionate about. Acknowledging that there is a dignity and independence yet a need for help for both young children and aging grandparents, they designed spaces accordingly. This purpose drove a compelling design that connected yet separated multiple tenants in a compound-like home. For the urban street condition, um, they, were, they wanted to respect the nature of this Chinatown with its rich cultural um, heritage. Um, they also wanted to respect the street and the corner which they were on very specifically while they were trying to fit many different, um, many different programs and spaces into a limited area. Uh, they chose to respect that corner very strongly. Um, and I believe this was another um, purpose that Williamson and Williamson wished to respect in their work um, moving forward. Uh, another very specific, um, I think they were looking at new typologies of how to approach the cost of living, especially in the area that they practiced in Toronto, where rental and just housing is incredibly expensive and continues to rise. So how, how, how do modern families, if their paychecks aren't quite, in, quite increasing the way that the, the cost of living is, how do they manage to, to remain in the places that they wish to remain and yet uh, afford their, their arrangements and be able to upkeep and sustain their arrangements? So that's what they looked at. Um, they looked at the the time frame of the families and the extended family with the house within the home so that, you know, if you look at the grandparents, they're also going to have um, financial ability and they provided rental spaces within their program so that a, an extended family could live together and sustain a more expensive accommodation to stay where they were living already. And as we look at how we interpreted this ourselves, we hope to join in on the discourses of Detroit neighborhoods with purposes of our own. Leah maintains a passion for affordable housing while Stephen hopes to see neighborhoods connected at the family level and revitalized aesthetically and programmatically to be sustainable in its operations. Deteriorated Detroit neighborhoods provide the field for this purpose and to find its solution. So we also looked at multi-generational living and we see opportunities in our purposes to um, provide an age diversity within neighborhoods and a support system for families. Um, bringing families together enable elderly care, child care, and interconnected family connections, which will ultimately enable the revitalization of communities. Another purpose that we hope to look into is economic viability for Detroit families and seeing how this um, connected living, multi-generational living might also provide economic upkeep and property upkeep, fighting blights and deteriorating um, neighborhoods and providing um, economic diversity for, um, for housing. And just ultimately, the, the desire to help out deteriorating Detroit neighborhoods to redefine and take opportunity rather than look at it as a as a sore spot in Detroit's history and Detroit's name, we looked um, at a greater purpose of using abandoned properties or spaces to provide green space or open space for these new new families and new revitalized communities as we continue to pursue multi-generational housing.